that the tongue oh, brings forth death mm -hmm. and destruction. Yes, it does. The Lord said, you can't get hot and cold. You understand? Mm -hmm. So if you're speaking life into a thing, then quit speaking death first. Well, when we speak death and destruction, we can't resurrect it. You dog your friendships. And then when things get better, all of a sudden you want everybody to praise your friendships. No, I remember what you said just a month ago, a lot of week ago. Uh uh. No, he's fooling, girl. He's trying to fool you. Uh uh. Don't trust him. Because I remember what you told me. Remember? When we go through things in life and God enables us to get through, I don't want a recording walking behind me reminding me of all that I said along the way. All right. That's like never getting out to the other side because the other side is still following me because I made a recording of it. And it on auto playback and it goes on and on and on and it's synchronized to my spirit and my ear and all I hear is this goop. Come on. The Lord says, Woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. For you devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Another side, these folks did not live, they live in one way, but they want to pray from sun up to sundown. <laughs> Often you all, some of these long prayers, when, see, do y'all listen when people pray? Mm -hmm. I do. Amen. Amen. And when I hear you praying, and you praying for the congregation, but all I hear is you and yours, <laughs> then I want to know when are you going to think about somebody other than your natural right, family? Right, when are you going right. to think about somebody other than yourself? When we walk through our Christian walk, and the only time we pray is for ourselves, for them that we like, I'll make it plain. Amen? Amen. The Lord said, pray. For them that have authority over you. Pray yep. for them that are over you in the house of God. But folks talk about the pastors, they talk about the deacons, they talk about the president. They, you got one preacher jumping up in the pulpit praying for Obama's death and his family. Come on now. Come on now. Come on. There is a time we need to have a time out and stand before God. And when we stand before God, then we ask, have to ask ourselves, not as a cliche, what would Jesus do? Right. But what we need to ask is, Lord, what would thou have me do? All right, come on, Pastor. I know what Jesus did. Right. The point is, what does Jesus want me to do? Well, we sang a song, Hear My Lord. Oh, Lord. You can use anything. Mm -hmm. Lord, you can use me. But only if I'm comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord, I'll go, but give me the specifics first. Is there any danger out there, Lord? Mm -hmm. Is there any Philistines around the corner, Lord? Are Goliaths, all the Goliaths dead, Lord? If it's safe, I'll go. Here am I. Will I get glory out of it? Will I get praise from it? Will the church pat me on my back and say, well, you just did such a wonderful job. Understand, if you desire to have the praise of men and the things that you do is that for the, that man may pat you on the back, then you have your reward. Mm -hmm. That's right. I don't want my reward from you all because Amen. there's nothing you can give me nothing. that God can't give me better. Hmm. Amen? Amen. Somebody said, well, I loaned the pastor one time. And you better thank God, God gave it to you to do it. Nah. You understand? I fed the pastor. I took the pastor out and I fed him them. You better thank God that God allowed you to have the money. Amen. 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 The word did not go far. It says that he that giveth, what? A prophet, a cold drink of water. And the prophet's name received a prophet's reward. Amen. That prophet is praying for you. Amen. And asking God to bless you. But too often, see, the, if you get the wrong prophet in the pulpit, then he will play on your sentiment and he will rob you blind. Mm -hmm. Say they go and pray for silly widows and they take all their money and they treat them like they're nothing. And then when the widow is broke and ain't got nothing left, then he out praying for somebody else instead. Thank you, Captain. Have mercy, have mercy. 
It says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you can pass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, you make him two for more of the child of hell than yourself. A proselyte is when you go out and you win over a convert for Christ. But see, they're not trying to go out and win over folks for Christ. They want to win over folks for themselves. You got churches out there only want to fill the church so they can say, look what I did. They had a good example. They had the million man march. All these so-called Christians followed Farrakhan up into Washington. They get up there and, and everybody thinks that we just Black power. Stand up, man would. And he get out there and Farrakhan stood up over all them Christians and say, no matter what the reason you came, I want you all to know that Farrakhan did this. I say, you certainly did. All these so-called men of God standing up there under a Muslim, being led by somebody not even of the same faith, not even worshiping the one that gave them life. All right. And he said, I did this. And you all fail for it. Understand. He said, woe unto you, you blind guides, which say, whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. Ye fools and blind, for whether, whether is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifies the gold. And whosoever shall swear by the altar, is it nothing but whosoever swears by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater the gift or the altar that sanctifies the gift. Whoso therefore shall swear by the altar, swears by it, and by all things thereon. And whosoever shall swear by the temple, swears by it, and by him that dwelleth therein. And he that shall swear by heaven, swear by the throne of God, and by him that sitteth thereon. Understand you all, when you make a vow, when you swear by anything of God, what you're doing is asking God to witness what you say. No, honest, I swear I'll pay you back. I swear to God I'll pay you back. God is my witness. God will know. He hears what I'm saying. Y'all ought to be ashamed of yourself. Because you're standing with your hand to God and know you have no intention of doing anything that you said, yet you're invoking God to witness your life. And you say, but I'm I was saying. But what do you want you to know? See, too often we want to swear by the altar. The altar is just an orifice in the house of God. We want to swear by the preacher. The preacher is just an officer in the house of God. I don't want to swear on the temple itself. The temple is just a place of service for God. So if you swear by anything that is in the house of God or in the service of God, it's sanctified by 